So there's a concept called ASCII art, where you're using plain text characters. That's ASCII characters, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, ASCII, pronounced ASCII. Uh, ASCII characters to create an image or the rep representation of an image. Now you can also combine that with another concept called ANSI escape codes. And uh, ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, one of the things that they defined are escape codes. So things that use the escape character to start a, a code to do things like clear the screen, move characters around the, uh, on the screen, or to change the color like the foreground and background color put those together and you're not creating just ASCII art, but ANSI art. So you're using different ASCII characters in different colors to create an image. And actually on DOS, you can use the extended ASCII character set to do sort of graphical drawing and things like that. And a popular program to do that on DOS was a program called The Draw. So let's take a look at The Draw to do some ANSI art. So here I've got a version of the draw. Now this version is 4.63 and it came out in 1993. Uh, and uh, the first version of the draw came out in 1986. Now let's look at the documentation files. So you typically expect to find that in a, in a TXT file, but there aren't any TXT files on here because uh, on DOS, typically those were uh, .doc. Uh, typically today you'd expect a .doc file to be a Word document, but actually on DOS that was that extension hadn't really become a standard yet, and so .doc would also be a plain text file. The draw.doc is the full manual for using the draw, and that is a very big file, 356k. I can't bring that up in the standard FreeDOS editor, uh, but uh, I could bring up the what's new, uh, but that's really just a listing of sort of what's new in each version. And uh, 4.63, this version was really just a maintenance release. It fixed a couple of bugs. Uh, now, um, before I, I draw, or show you the draw, I want to uh, talk about what an ANSI escape file is, an ANSI file. Uh, and it's got a whole bunch of ANSI escape characters in it that, as I said, will clear the screen or move the, the cursor around the screen or uh, set these different colors. Now, to be able to display an ANSI file properly, on uh, DOS, you need to have what's called an ANSI driver loaded. Now we don't typically load that on FreeDOS, but you can see here that uh, I've added that to my config sys. And so I'm going to go display my fdconfig.sys file. And at the very, very end, I've added a line device equals to load the uh, ANSI driver. This is a, a version called Nancy, N-A-N-S-I uh, driver that will uh, allow you to display ANSI files correctly. So let's look at an ANSI file. And uh, the draw includes a sample version. We'll just do a directory on .ans. And you can see they've included this file, shuttle2.ans. Let's go ahead and type that out, uh, shuttle ans and what you're going to see here is you're going to see a brief animation because uh, you can include different ANSI escape characters as I say to clear the screen or uh, position the cursor and you can see a brief animation it runs right really really fast because my machine's really really fast uh, and then it's going to end up with a color drawing of the space shuttle and so that's what we're going to see when I hit return right here so you see a little brief animation and then we get the uh, 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 the color drawing of the shuttle so how do you create images like that? How do you actually use the draw to create these ANSI drawings? Well, let's go ahead and run the program. So the uh, executables in this directory are uh, these programs. The first one is going to print the documentation. There's another one in here for setup, but we want to run the program, the draw. So this is a shareware program actually, and as you can see, it wasn't very expensive. It was uh, $22 uh, if you want to keep using it after the first two weeks. Uh, so, uh, and just press any key to uh, continue. So we'll go ahead and press uh, space, for example. And so this is the draw. Uh, the bottom line is actually the status line, uh, then it's sort of the quick access line for the draw. And it's showing you on the left-hand side, the, uh, the in that red, uh, the location of my cursor. And you can see that if I uh, move my cursor around, it's going to change those numbers because that's where my cursor is located. And then some other information that kind of tells you about what I'm doing. And then uh, those uh, uh, numbers 
uh, 1 through 10 with the special uh, drawing characters, those are actually indicating not the numbers on my keyboard, because if I hit number 1 on my keyboard, I'm just going to get 1. Just like if I pr press the letter A, I'm going to get A. I'm going to back up with the backspace key. Uh, but if I hit F1, it's going to draw in uh, that upper left uh, corner for a drawing. And then F5, I can do a couple of those, and that'll give me uh, connectors going horizontally. And then F2, and then I can use the mouse to position over exactly into the next line. And then I can do um, a vertical F6, couple, oops, F6, and then a couple of spaces and another F6, and then use my mouse to position exactly where I want it to be. And then I could do, oops, and then I can do uh, F3, and a couple of F5s, and then an F4. And so now I've drawn a box. And so that's one way that you can draw boxes in the draw. Uh, and obviously, as you saw, I can, I can position my mouse cursor anywhere and I can type out uh, letters like uh, hello. But there's other things you can do in here as well. So remember when the program came up, it had Alt-H for help. And so if I do Alt-H, you can see I've got a big long list of things in here. In fact, uh, every letter of the alphabet is represented as an Alt command plus some other ones. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, using these keyboard shortcuts. Alt-H is an important one. And uh, escape is another character, uh, another key in the keyboard, uh, which is important to know because that's going to bring up the uh, the menu. Although it also, if you hit the right uh, mouse button on your mouse, uh, that is also the default to bring up uh, the menu as well. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and do an escape out of this to get out of this screen, and I'm going to do uh, uh, escape to bring up the menu. And so here you can see the menu. Uh, obviously. Uh, saving and loading different files and some other things you can do with uh, global commands to move and copy text around on the screen, uh, different options, uh, things like clearing the screen over here. But the thing I really want to play with right now are these fonts. So right now I'm in standard font. Uh, that allows me to just type on the screen, but it's got these other neat little fonts as well. And so two that I, I want to kind of experiment with is uh, Shadow and Medieval. I've been playing with those a lot, and they're, they're kind of neat. Let's do Shadow. And if I click on that, I bring my mouse over here, I can just type some letters, and I can just say, uh, hello. And you can see that it's now used uh, this Shadow font uh, to create an ASCII drawing of the type hello, the text hello. So if you need to generate some large text to uh, maybe welcome your users or to present an alert of some kind, uh, maybe as an exit screen uh, for a program, uh, this is a, a neat and handy way to create, I would call this title text that you might show up on the screen. Now, um, this is being done in just, you know, white, on a black background. In fact, it's bright white on a black background. If I, uh, let's put this by the way back into, do escape and go back into fonts and we'll put this back on standard font. Uh, and now if I uh, were to uh, go back into the menu or as I say, right click on the mouse, we'll do the same thing. Uh, it's got this quick palette. And so right now I'm set for uh, bright white in the foreground and a black background. And I can select something else. I could select, uh, I could select sort of a, uh, a bright yellow on a red background. I could do that. And uh, let's also pick some uh, some different uh, characters to play with on that uh, you know F1 through F10. So I'm going to just click up here, and uh, that'll select a, uh, a little box, which it's already inserted for me because uh, I... Uh, that's that's what I had done when I when I when I clicked on that. Uh, but I'm going to do backspaces to get rid of that. So why did I do that? Well, I can actually then uh, position my mouse and I can uh, click and drag and create a little box. And by doing that, I can now do things like well, I can copy or move. Uh, but more importantly, I can do fill. So let's do a fill. Let's do F. And what are the different things that I can fill with? I can fill with an attribute, which is basically the, the colors that I've selected, uh, or I could uh, uh, you know, just set the foreground, the background colors, or I could do uh, B, both. And so that's what I want to do here. I'm going to do B for both. And now what character am I going to use? Uh, let's go ahead and use, uh, we'll just use a, a lowercase x on my keyboard. And so now you can see in bright yellow on a red background, I'm able to very quickly draw on my screen. 
Now, if I wanted to, I could uh, move my mouse over here, and rather than having F1 uh, and F2 and things like that to do line drawing characters, I could do F1 to create this little shaded character, uh, slightly uh, darker shade or more complete shade, uh, even more complete, uh, and then a, a full box, a completely filled box. And I'm just doing that with F1, F2, F3, F4. Uh, so let's go ahead and now draw a simple image using the draw. So I'm going to go back into the menu. I'm going to go ahead and now clear the screen. So I'm going to clear page. Uh, I've only got the one page loaded, so I'll just say yes. We'll clear this page. I don't want to say what I'm working on, though, so no. All right, so let's uh, let's first change our color. Let's make this uh, let's make it an orange color, and we'll put it on a black background over there. Okay, and uh, let's um, I'm just gonna draw a box. We'll put it right here, and uh, let's fill that with both attributes and characters, and I'll do that with F1 characters. So it's got sort of a, a shaded out uh, orange. I can do another one on top of that. Uh, so let's do one right there. I'm gonna fill that with uh, both of them, and again, the F1 key. And then we'll do another one up here. I'm going to uh, fill that with both, and we'll do F1. And uh, let's um, let's change my color, and let's do a green foreground on the black background. And up here now, I'm going to go ahead and draw just a little thing like that. And we're going to go ahead and fill that with both, and we'll fill it with F2. And so now I've created a little pumpkin. Let's go back and change my colors again. So uh, rather than using orange or green, let's go ahead and use a bright, bright yellow. Um, and uh, I can actually do this on, a, on an orange background if I chose to do that, so I could do that. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and draw some eyes on my pumpkin. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little square that's about right there. Let's go ahead and fill that with both and I'm going to do the full character, uh, F4. I'm going to draw a slightly bigger eye over here. Here we go. Yeah, that size there looks good. And we'll fill with both with F4. And uh, then I can draw a little mouth over here if I wanted. So let's go ahead and just draw, first of all, a, a big, long, happy line. We'll fill that with both using F4. And then uh, we'll sort of fill in some extra space on the mouth. We'll fill in this up here. And uh, we'll offset it a little bit there. There we go. We'll go ahead and fill that with both using F4. And then I'm going to leave space for a little tooth. And I'm going to Continue drawing. We're going to fill that with both F4. And so now I've got a little mouth there that's got a little little tooth exposed. And I'm going to do the same thing uh, over here uh, by uh, drawing a slightly narrower mouth. And we'll just draw that much over there. Fill both F4. And then we'll sort of draw it like that. Fill both F4, and so now I've got sort of a gnarly looking mouth on my uh, on my pumpkin. Uh, let's go ahead and change the colors one more time, and we'll change it back to that uh, orange on black, and that allows me to up here uh, draw some little eyes in here. So let's draw a little eye that kind of looks like oops, need to look a little bit like there. Let's. Put it right there, and we'll fill that with both using the F1. So that fills in, and then we'll do it again up here. And so I want to look at it like that. Fill both with F1. 
And so now I've got some some little eyes uh, put onto my pumpkin that's kind of looking off to one side. And uh, then I can go into the menu uh, one more time and I can select a different color. And let's pick uh, let's pick red. And we'll set a font. In this case, we'll use the medieval font. And I'm going to print right here. I'm just going to move my mouse there and just type happy. And then scroll down a little bit here. And I think I should be able to type in Halloween right here if I can. There we go. Happy Halloween. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and um, save that file. So do a right click and now file. And now here's different ways you can save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do save. In what format do I wanna do that? So you got a couple of different options here. I could do uh, ANSI art, which is what I really wanna save it as, but also ASCII art, uh, where it's just plain characters, no color. Uh, the at codes, that, that was uh, important for uh, these uh, BBSs would support these different at codes. And another one that you could use is C if you want to create some C files. So let's first of all save this as ANSI. So let's do A for ANSI. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and clear the screen when it does that. Um, we'll take the defaults on that one. And the displays, be, eh, it's fine. I don't really have animation on this one, so it doesn't really matter. And then we'll save this as pumpkin.ans. Let's also save it again. So we'll do Alt S. That was the uh, key to do an Alt uh, save. Alt S. And we'll save this as plain text using ASCII. So it's just I. And colors are not going to be saved. That's fine because I've already saved it as an ANSI file. And so we'll save this one as pumpkin.txt. And we'll save it here as one other file format. And you can see I'm going to save it as a C file. So it's just C. And do I want to do this as crunched or ASCII? We'll do this as uh, uh, we'll do this normal. And we'll uh, reference it as an image data. And then uh, we're going to save that as pumpkin.c. And so this is just different ways you can save an ASCII or an ANSI image uh, into these different formats. So let's go ahead and now exit the program. So let's do bring up the menu with the right click and we'll do quit or I could have done, done an Alt X. Yes, I really want to exit. And now let's go ahead and look at my files. And so there I've got my three files. Uh, .ans is the ANSI file, .txt is the plain text file, and then pumpkin.c is my C source code. So let's go ahead and, and look first of all at the plain uh, text file. So we'll do a type on pumpkin.txt, and you can see I'm getting just a very plain text uh, Happy Halloween from uh, from that pumpkin.txt file. But I've got my ANSI driver loaded, so I can actually uh, just do a directory on, on pumpkin to remind us about what's there. And we'll do a type on pumpkin.ans. And this will display the same image, but in color. And so that's another handy way to display these uh, these ANSI images or to create these ANSI images with, uh, with the draw. And one other thing I wanna show off is that uh, C, and so if I uh, edit the pumpkin.c, uh, there's a little bit of work you need to do to actually translate this into an image, but now you've got all the code that you would need to draw a, that image onto a screen. So this is a very handy way to uh, dump an image onto the screen uh, using all those colors. So I'm gonna leave it right there. So, uh, before I go, I just wanted to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen, and I really appreciate all of your support. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here, so thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.